Good evening. This is de facto weekly review with me, Jargal Sachen. We will share with you our opinions about three events that shaped social, economic, political life of Mongolians from last week. Today's topics are parliamentarians to boycott the plenary sessions if, if LRT project is not rediscussed. Second topic, will four parliament members' immunity be suspended? The third topic is amendments to the criminal law of Mongolia. First issue is about Ulaanbaatar traffic conditions. The city authority have tried many ways of solving this issue. They have been discussing of a BLT, bus, a light train, or metro, or hanging capsule, or cable cars, and now LRT. LRT is a light train transport. Uh, light rail transport. They are suggesting to make one road of, out of three possible uh, routes they will, they're going to make in Ulaanbaatar city. So the first one from Yarmak from all the airport to the city, through the city of Ulaanbaatar and going through the, uh, to the northeast, Sansar, uh, this route is the most congested area of Ulaanbaatar city. And if this LRT is constructed, then it will, uh, it will substantially drop the time we spend in our car. Today, delay is two and a half hours per person per day on this route. In the very interesting statistic, 35 days on this route, people spend a year just in, tra in your car. It, it is a matter of costing a lot of fuel, productivity, and this uh, LRT route, just on the first route, will, uh, have, um, will be decreasing all conditions for 25%, according to the city estimation, uh, which is about $50 million US dollars per one kilometer of this road. This project will create 12,000 jobs. If this project is started now, it will be ended in two years by June 2024. It's election year. The metro proposal is refused because it will cost $150 million per kilometer. And plus metro is feasible only for a city which has more than three million people. Some parliament member opposes. The argument of Mr. Dorch Hunt from Labour Party is, why would we finance this project with commercial law? This one, though 70% of the financing is a loan from China, 5% per year for 15 years loan. How about uh, the Chinese also, well, insurance company will charge 5% premium fee. And also it will cost 50 million US dollar subsidy from the budget every year. And the contractor will be Chinese company. If we borrow from international development institutes this same amount of money, it will cost just 1% a year and it could extend it for 30 years. That's what his argument is. And plus also, Mongolian debt, government debt to GDP ratio today is 51%. Well, by law, we should not have more than 60%. So we have 9% uh, space for that. It's about 1.2 billion US dollar, and you cannot spend that money for just one project. Chairman Hurl Batar, who was former Minister of Finance, refused this idea of the government guarantee. He said, uh, <clears throat> the government guarantee is regarded as a government loan, and we don't have a space for any loan further. 
<clears throat> and also it, this draft resolution contradicts the fiscal stability law. The resolution will increase Mongolia's debt by 3. billion US dollar. That's why this issue should be not only discussed by 76 parliament members, but the whole by whole country. That's his uh, refusal. And there was a very hot debate after his remark at the standing committee meeting. Ulaanbaatar city deputies got mad after this remark, and they said they will boycott the plenary sessions if this issue is rediscussed again, if not rediscussed again. For example, MP Sukhubatar said that main obstacle to Ulaanbaatar's development is certain officials in the Mongolian state. Mr. Sukhbatar was saying to Mr. Hurilbatar that don't confuse Mongolian people with this, uh, uh, mislead the people. It is not a place to uh, mislead the people, parliament is. And uh, he, he, he was saying that we are not talking about 3.2 billion US dollar. We talk about only the first line, which will cost 926 million US dollar and out of which only $510 million U.S. A guarantee is required. The another lawmaker, Mr. Inka Maglan, criticizes that Standing Committee on the Budget, chaired by Hurz Bata, rejected the draft resolution, and it will affect the interests of Ulaanbaatar residents. Uh, on the contrary, lawmaker Hurdl Batar, when he was a uh, minister of finance, he was fully allocating budget money to his constituency, which is Ovs, I'm a pro, Ovs, Ovs provinces. It looks like only Ovs residents have more importance than whole Ulaanbaatar city. That was uh, the remark by Mr. Sukhbatar. If this alert project is not rediscussed, really the standing committee uh, at the standing, uh, if, if, if this LRT project is not rediscussed really again, then, the, they, then they will not, this group of parliament members will not support the fiscal amendments. In this connection, the mayor of Lambata City, Somaya Bazar, said that this project is not pushing the country into debt. It's a big project that benefits residents of Ulaanbaatar. The project will be under public uh, scrutiny from the, out, from, the, from the beginning. We are waiting for parliament's decisions to start the first large scale work that has been ready for a half a year. You can dislike me, but don't harm the people of the capital. That was his, our mayor remark on that. After this heated debate, People's Party working group, People's Party have decided to form a working group on consider, on, for consideration of this issue and submit, submit new proposal next time. Anyway, these discussions show that budget allocation are really unevenly distributed in the country. And it always became eternal, dis eternal discussions in the parliament when the issue comes about budget allocation. The paradox is uh, Ulaanbaatar population is a half of the population, yet they receive about a quarter of budget allocations. So that's the heated debate which is going on for through uh, several parliament sessions for last 10 or so years. Let's see what will be the final result of this alert uh, destination. Uh, and it uh, looks like it will have a, another more hot discussions, not only in the parliament, but also in the public. The second topic we will discuss now is about the uh, immunity of four parliament members. A couple of weeks ago, the control organ of the ruling party, People's Party, have asked nine parliament members to check themselves by 
IAAC, which is an independent agency, uh, in, independent authority against corruption. Uh, and uh, today, as of today, only somehow four parliament members are called for taking of their immunity. On Monday, April 25, the Prosecutor General of Mongolia, Bey Jargal Saikhang, submitted the names of four parliament members for misusing uh, money from Development Bank of Mongolia. And that's why he asked the give a permission or to take off the immunity of this following members. Mr. Parliament Member Ghan Huyag, Parliament Member Amr Tukshin, Atung Huyag, and Pater Bilik. Because in accordance with the law, Parliament must discuss the prosecutor's proposal within five days, which meaning before May 2, they have to discuss, plenary session to discuss. But before that, subcommittee of immunity should decide whether they will take or remove, remove the, their immunity for these members. And a long-awaited the standing committee on uh, meeting was held, but if they, have, they decide that they will take off this immunity, still the issue will be discussed again at the Standing Committee on Legal Affairs. If they, if they suspend their immunity, then so through two, state, two, parla two parliament committees it will go through, then the parliament will discuss. But however, yesterday they, they have met the Standing Committee for Immunity have met, but because one member was not there, they could not make any decisions. And um, Friday, they have, the, the missing member came and they have discussed the issue and decided not to uh, rip off the immunity for the four members. So uh, let's, let's go in, in details what happened and why this, on which for which crimes they are accused for. Let's go one by one. Mr. Amr Tufshin had uh, given a loan of MNT 33 billion to a company called Vertex Mining Partners in 2020. And uh, this, this loan is connected with uh, Mr. Khan Huyag, as I have mentioned. The second person, Mr. Atun Huyag, who is a uh, who is, by the way, from the uh, Democratic Party. Um, he was a head of the Democratic Party and he was a prime minister of the country and he is accused, for, uh, he is accused of uh, misappropriating uh, loans from the Development Bank of Mongolia while uh, in the office of, uh, as a prime minister. And also uh, he was uh, abusing his power as prime minister by facilitating loans by the Development Bank of Mongolia to Hutul Cement and the Darhan Metal Factory. Uh, another parliament member, Patr Bileg, has been accused of accepting a large sum of money in bribes from Mr. the same name, Patr Bileg, who was a director of NVT LLC, which received $21 million from the Development Bank of Mongolia. So they each member have uh, responded to their acquisition. Mr. Ratun Khoyak said that this acquisition are uh, fictional stories made up uh, to him to silence. And uh, also Mr. Bhattar Bilek said that, um, yes, I'm a friend with this another Bhattar Bilek, but uh, uh, he had uh, received that loan without any my facilitation, he said. Mr. Ratun Khoyak, this loan was taken out before I got appointed as a member of parliament. So uh, the, Mr. Uh, Amar Tushen said that uh, uh, he is ready to be checked. And uh, by the way, he had made the appeal to be, first, uh, to be the first parliament member to be checked. But however, as I said, the, the subcommittee for immunity of parliament members have not approved the idea of... Uh, taken off their immunity. 
That's what I was expecting anyway, because there were several similar cases for last uh, maybe eight years, and the parliament members never are taken off immunity from each other. That was what I was expecting. This decision of the subcommittee is not good for a serious fight against corruption by the prime minister of the country. Um, <clears throat> It's happening for the first time when the ruling party announces, denounces a particular own members, own uh, parliament members to be checked. And uh, though it is started in that way, but uh, the subcommittee have not decided uh, to take off their immunity. I don't know what will happen with the next step where the prime minister have promised that they will increase uh, they, they will fight more seriously on another round of corruptions connected with a coal export of the country. But however, there were several arrests, as I mentioned last week, and uh, hopefully this, uh, with this uh, immunity is being not taken, the corruption fight of the government will not be ended. The third topic is about amendments to the criminal code of Mongolia. The cabinet have decided last Wednesday that they will propose certain amendments to the criminal code of Mongolia to the parliament. The amendment stipulates tougher penalty sanctions for corruption crimes as abuse of office power. Specifically, there will be no amnesty for the rape of minors, sexual exploitation, human trafficking, and money laundering or corruption. Fines will not be imposed on serious crimes, and corruption crimes will not be resolved with uh, simplified procedures. That was several similar simplified procedures have taken in the country and several corruption criminals have been very lightly uh, uh, penalized for that. The, there is a one statute of limitations for corruption crimes. Uh, this uh, provision gave a lot of chance for many criminals to be uh, to either not having any penalty or, or very symbolic penalty. And this statute of limitation or that after crime certain period of time they will investigate and after certain period have passed they will not consider or reconsider that crimes again, the files will not be opened again. But now the, 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 this statute of limitations for corruption crimes will be uh, at least five years. And the criminal will be subject to a 20-year ban on public services. The draft bill provides also the extension of statute of limitations for officials with immunity and the uh, abolition of simplified procedures for corruption and official uh, misconduct. Cabinet believes that with the adoption of this bill, Mongolia will become consistent with international treaties and conventions to which it is a part, strengthening the state policy on reducing corruption crimes and further intensify the principles of the inevitability of criminal liability and justice. These are three topics we wanted to share with you today. And thank you very much for watching and see you next week.